think she's still a capable vet. Similar. To- <laughs> Your phone comes out. I can't open. I care. I got it, man. I got it. <laughs> Do you? Fucking capable vet. Similar to Holly Holm last week. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Just go. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, what the f- Pay-per-view week, boys. You know what to do. Subscribe. And? Like the video. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the most electrifying, most entertaining betting show on the planet, The Running Mouth MMA Show. I'm your host, Sean, The Running Mouth. And to my right with me, as always, my co-host. It's all real. And also to my right, but you cannot see his face, the mysterious one, Matty Mage. We're back, boys. He We're is back. back. Yeah, he's back. He did not he, get he the boo. He didn't get the boo yet. We're at three call-ins. Chris D, mark it down. Three call-ins. He gets to five. We're going to do a little write-up, maybe a little conference sit-down. We'll invite you on, Chris D. Uh, well, welcome to the show, guys. A UFC 287, obviously, is next. Down in Miami, your boy bought, brought out the... The floral. Yep, me too, as you I, guys can see. Yeah, <laughs> I could go to the Versace <laughs> mansion in this. They may let me in. Uh, very excited about this card, guys. Like, top to bottom, we know everybody. You know everybody. There's no yep. filler. It doesn't feel like there's any fillers here. It, it just feels like a legit, worthy of my $80 pay-per-view with a massive main event and a crazy co-main event. Yep. Um, like I said, extremely excited. Uh, for all the new viewers out there that we're probably going to drag in uh, this week, because every pay-per-view week we get new people, and then we get some people in the comments that maybe don't understand what it is that we do here. Obviously, it says bet show. Obviously, we make picks. We talk our shit. We like to have fun. We have one guy in the background who kind of try to tries to moderate that, you know, to, to a minimum. But we like to fucking joke around around here. We do make our picks. We do take them seriously. We do watch the tape, contrary to popular belief. And sometimes a tape doesn't tell you anything anyway. Yeah. Uh, we just like to deliver the picks in a way that nobody else does. So, again, if you're new, that's what we do around here. We have fun with this shit while making our picks, while looking at these crazy lines. And we have a soundboard unlike any other. And we know that. We got one complaint about it. <laughs> like it's like uh, it's like a eight hundred people. We get one complaint, and that's the guy that pisses me off. Okay, so for him, see you at the top. Have a good one. Uh, let's start it off, Maddie. We got uh, some some docket stuff. Obviously, we had some stuff over the weekend. What do you got for me? Yeah, let's uh, let's recap San Antonio. Yeehaw! Man. Main event was a uh, lackluster, in my opinion, from Cheeto's side of things. But San Hagen looked really, really good. So best he's ever looked. Listen, I I told you guys I'm gonna take hold it on, from here. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. I want to give on. you props. I want to give you props. All right, all right, all right. We don't give you your props give right here. My right props. Now. Give my okay? props. Although in the comments, when we get new people come on, it's always the white guy in the right, <laughs> light skinned guy watches tape and he's the greatest. Let's of all go. Time. I, I want to give his props. He on. nailed it. You, you fucking drilled it. Volume, volume, volume. Yep. He's gonna outstrike him. I said he would take off maybe one round. It looked like Cheeto took off all five fucking rounds. We'll get into the judging in a minute. So I do want to praise you for that. You nailed it. I hope you guys. He said it. I bet with my heart. Yep. I did. You know I did. Crushed last week. Yeah. Fucking yeah. crushed yeah. him. Yeah. He knows I bet with my heart. And I was, he, he was right the whole time. It's not like in my head. Again, I never said he wasn't going to. Corey couldn't win. You didn't hear me say he can't win. No. It was. I didn't think. I thought Cheeto was being way too unselfish in taking the fight. Having a four fight win streak. Knowing you have a title fight looming. Yep. And now he may never get one again. So. Take the floor, Mr. Sanhagen. You were correct. I was just going to say, you got crushed last week. Oh, looking oh, looking to repeat this week as well, so stay tuned for the picks. <laughs> oh, God. But, yeah, obviously, yeah. It, was, it was a good fight. Uh, Cheeto, it's tough, man. I think he's going to have to go back to a draw, drawing board with Jason Perillo and figure out exactly what his style is going to be because you can't, you're can't. you not going to be a champion fighting like that. I don't know if it's, like, all of his fights leading up to this. That's what I was saying is he's always behind on the rounds and stuff like that. And then eventually he comes back and gets this knockout. And I didn't see him doing that against Sanhagen where you're down rounds and then eventually get that knockout. And I mean, he, the most entertaining was those 15 seconds where he just let it all the last out 15 there. seconds. And of then, the fight. and then everybody was sitting there like, uh, you should have did that like way earlier. Third round, take you know? a shot. So Maybe. he's going to, he's super young. He's, He's going to have to go back to drawing board and figure out exactly how he can improve from this. And hopefully we, we get a, a good performance from him the next time. I obviously, you seen his Twitter called out Jan, said, you know what to do. That's that's up next. And, and it's like, like, again, it's like, you know, you're calling out a guy who's lost four of his last yeah. five or three of his last four. I I just think as a guy, I just, Cheeto's easy to root for. Yeah. He's easy. To, he's easy to get behind. Yeah. Right. Pause. But. That was the best San Hagen's ever looked. Yeah, he in my looked amazing. Opinion. I've never seen him look so good. It's not that again. I'm allowed to not like people. Like we all have our favorite wrestlers, your favorite basketball team. This is no. This ain't no different. You have you like certain guys, certain guys' personalities. I'm just not a fan of. Yeah. 
Sanhagen looked absolutely great. Got all my respect. Now, not that he needed it, but from a betting standpoint going forward, I will look at him in a, in a much different way. Cheeto, though, let's go back to your boy O'Malley. Take the loss away. Now I'll give O'Malley. He's undefeated. The, I just, this whole taking a round off, taking two, we talked about it. Yeah. He was, we were at the Edgar fight. He was going to lose that fight yep. if he didn't knock him out, points-wise. But he just looked a lot differently. It looked like he was ready to strike. He did not want to be there. Perillo, after the second round ended, I don't know if you guys saw what he said to him. Are you okay, man? It seemed he like really genuine. Like, yeah. No, but the first one, he said, he's like, are you okay, man? Like, are you okay? And yeah. she was like, yeah, you know, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Like, no, you're not. Something was off. Yeah. Something wasn't right. He may come out and say it later on. Like, I don't like hearing about, like, Usman didn't train, like everybody's saying this week. Yeah. But he just needed to get aggressive. But why wait till the last 20 seconds? Because if you're going to take those that sh- chance to get killed in the last 20 seconds, you should have took the chance in the third round, second round. I get the first round. There's a lot of guys out there. Okay, Floyd Mayweather's been famously doing it throughout his entire 50 and 0. He takes off the first two or three rounds because he knows he can beat you the next eight or nine, right? Same thing with Cheeto, but he he just never got off the blocks. Yeah. Never got off the blocks if we're talking track. Just poop, just didn't go. And especially with that, the implications that that fight had, like he, too much. He, he wins that. It. He wins that fight. Hundred percent. An instant title contender. But I thought he should have had that anyway, which is what was my whole point was. What he, this must have been super incentivized for him. He probably got a nice payday. And again, with like his daughter's condition, and she's like, I want this dude to be super successful. Yeah. So I'm not hating on him at all. I'm not mad at him. It just wasn't the right fight for him. Wasn't the right night. It happens. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. so mo- moving forward, uh, Stan Hagen deserves not, he doesn't deserve a title fight. There needs to be a title eliminator somewhere in there. Yep. But you, there has to be. He did but. call out Marab. Okay. In the, uh, in the ring. Yeah. Marab oh, okay. was there. Correct. And uh, when asked from an interviewer, Marab's manager said he would be interested in that San Hagen fight. So. It do seem like uh, two high volume guys that yeah. Make it very, I would like that would be fun. I think that would be fun. Very yeah. interesting fight. I think it would be fun. Again though, here's another like I get it. Marab is like it doesn't care. I'll fight anybody. Rah rah rah. Wants to jump in the stands because somebody tells him to fight Aljo. I just think that Marab should be smart as well. Like if Cejudo wins, which he very well, I'm not telling you who I'm gonna pick, but he very well could beat Aljamain, right? So now you got Cejudo as champion. Well, who would the next guy in line be? That's, it would be Marab, That's right? my dream Cause, matchup. Cause if, you Al- were, if you were to put somebody against Cejudo, like, I want to see, see that it's shit. It's got to be him because yeah. there's only one guy that can take that wrestling for 25 minutes, and it's Cejudo, if anybody's... It would, yep. That's a fun wrestling matchup. Crazy. That's a fun-ass UFC, like an MMA wrestler-on-wrestler matchup. A lot of times it's not. Usually yeah. they just stand. I'll tell you right now, if they stand... So who knows going to piece him oh, the fuck yeah. up? Oh, yeah. That that won't even be a, yeah. Won't even be close. But if it just becomes a hug match, I mean, I don't know. I, I like I like Cejudo's chances I just, again. I just love Cejudo against anybody, he, man. Like, he's just one of those guys like John Jones. He's annoying, Jones, but he's so his, good. His IQ and how smart he is when it comes to fighting is just next level, man. Like, that guy is a student of the game, and he's just so fucking smart. Learns so from every mistake. He's, he's just, it's hard to pick against a guy like Cejudo, man, yeah, so as that, long as he's been off. So that would be fun, but if Marab and Sanhagen were to fight also, that would be kind of fun because I don't know what... What would Corey do? Could he just fend off the takedowns all night? Would he go for some? I mean, you wouldn't take him down. You know what yeah. I mean? It would just So that might turn to a stand-up fight. And there's another one where if that stayed standing up, <laughs> hello, Corey going to piece him up too. Yep. You know, it's not that, that Corey can't be a – this whole division is a division of matchups. I love – right? this is this is my favorite division out of the whole UFC. It, it used to be mine. It's still right it. there. I love it. But, again, all these matchups – are real stylistic problems for each other. And you can't even necessarily go, this guy's the best. But if you were to say who has the most well-rounded game, man, it might be Sanhagen. As far as skills go, and I just don't like his well. two losses. Yeah. What's that? I said and, and the ability for uh, submissions on the ground as well, Sanhagen. Yeah. Sean O'Malley, you know, that's my guy. Don't sleep on him. His, Me neither. You know, I think O'Malley's so good game, that he can so. just keep it on his feet, and yeah. I don't think it'll matter. Because yep. uh, he's going to stray. What do you think? He's going to stand there and not – you think he's not getting off the blocks? Yep. He is, but there's another guy. That's O'Malley, him. please sit out until the goddamn title fight. O'Malley, Sanhagen, you got Umar coming up. Yeah. I love this division, I don't man. Know. It was just a we- overall, though, a very weird evening. Like, you had four four or five canceled fights. One got canceled yep. during the middle of the card. Yep. 
uh, because of of a sickness, even though what's-his-face called the guy, like, Manel Cop wrote some vicious shit on Instagram, whereas we found out the dude had a seizure. Yeah. It's like, all right, slow your roll, cop. You're on the juice. He must have still been on the juice because he's all fired up. Yeah. He's fucking roid roid raging from Instagram in the back. Oh, he fucking piece of shit. Whatever. Like, so just an overall weird ass evening. Weird judging. The full, we, everybody's already talked horrible, about. It. You don't need to hear it from us. Yeah, Forty eight, no. forty seven. Whoever scored that, like Mergliata, get you a man that can do both, guys. Okay, repping and judging. But he gave Macy Barber thirty twenty seven. So maybe he shouldn't be doing. It. You would think a guy who works the act. You would think all the refs would be the best judges. Maybe not the case. Maybe sometimes they're too close to. Was the this action. his first time? No, well, no, since 1999. 1999 was the last time Mercliata oh, judged a fight. That guy, Joel, whatever his last name was, that was the yeah. first event he has judged. Yeah, oh, well, it, and it showed. 1999. I was in my 20s then. And it That's absolutely crazy. showed. And there was one other guy uh, that, that who, who's on, what's next on our thing? What do we got? Oh, it's our, our guy? Is it our, our guy? guy? It's our guy? Our Is guy. it our guy? It's our guy. That was a sucker punch, rear naked choke. That's the difference between main JV and varsity, baby. I'm varsity in the UFC. He's the goat. Hey, Nate I got a highlight like real like Evil Knievel. Landwell. I got swagger like Elvis Presley, and I'll be damned if I ain't handsome. <laughs> Very handsome. Very handsome. Very handsome. I mean, you. This guy is a. Wa- I have a whole soundboard dedicated to Nate Landwehr right now. I love this guy, Nate the Train. Again, lightweight division. Uh, or featherweight. Fe- featherweight. Featherweight. Featherweight, featherweight division. Weight. Dude, we need this guy. Right now, in this division, yeah. we need this guy. Nate the Train on the mic. Fuck the mic in the octagon. The guy's a savage. Yep. Even in his losses, man, he goes out there, gives gives everything. Leaves it all in there. And just it just does it in a nasty way. Like uh, Matty was saying to us prior to the show that how he just goes away from his family for 10 weeks. Because he's a savage. Because he can't be around him. Like, he needs to be a whole different animal. Yeah. But then as soon as the fight, that guy is cool as shit, man. If you're telling me you don't want to see that guy in the top three and just and going for a title, you're out your mind. I would love for that guy to be champ. <laughs> you know, I, I love thing. him, man. He's, he's starting to get, like, that Kevin Holland treatment where, like, all the fans are starting to get oh, behind yeah. this guy. Like, oh, oh, we, this are, guy's we are Nate the train. Yeah. We are the train. I, I'm, I'm on that train, bro. Yeah. I love this dude so damn much. And he's fucking good. He's not like oh, some, yeah. he's not like some, some journeyman. Like, this guy's fucking good, man. And yeah. he, he just goes, like, ham when he's in that fucking cage. He just... he. Puts all, all <laughs> anything aside and just goes right yeah, at Yeah, and he leaves it all I in there. Him, and, and then just to give you just that charisma and just, he's very likable. Yeah. Just likable. Fact. Yeah. There's certain guys that'll talk shit. I'm sure some of you don't like me or ones that have gone and passed now that you didn't like me or like you. But it's like, this dude is just very likable. Yeah. You, if you don't like homeboy, I got a problem with you. <laughs> like, for real. Dude, that's that, that's that chill and just the way he speaks, man, with the little southern accent, like, ah, I just love the vibes, man. Yeah. I am on Nate the train. I hope this dude steamrolls to the top of this division. I, I'm not saying he could beat Volk, but I'm t- <laughs> But if he beat Volk, it would be crazy. Oh, it would be wild. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, I don't think I've ever been on an actual train other than the subway. I would just t- get on a train the next day and just take a ride for Nate the train because the dude is just such a savage. Uh, I think you know, should I be him and Yair wouldn't be the worst thing in the world right now. Like, I, I'm telling you, let this guy get, like, two or three more wins. I think it takes two if you can get got, two finishes coming up i think i just this want guy to just feed him there. a bunch of trash cans man i, That's I just true too. Him, no but i mean imagine this guy in the top five yeah. top four like i think that would be very helpful and this, this division needs this, it this, this division, division needs, needs the life it. this is yeah. what i'm saying bantamweight doesn't need it uh welterweight and middleweight seem to not need it right now. A lot of hype. Yep. You know, obviously heavyweight's never had it. It's always going to have one or two guys and that's it. Light heavyweight's yeah. always been dog shit. It's just like Jones was always just the guy. Some of these divisions are, are, are 155 is fabulous. So the 145, though, has been lacking. We need this guy. We need this guy. Yeah. The UFC needs this guy. Yep. All right? Everybody does. So I was going to say, he's 4-2 and two in the UFC. Three wins in a row. Yeah. Three performance bonuses in a Bang, row. Bang, we got a little mini new Gaethje on our hands. <laughs> uh, very handsome. Very excited. <laughs> very handsome. Nate the Train. Yeah, Nate the Train. Salute to Nate the God dang Train. All right. Well, we got anything else? Now are we ready Ooh, for these picks, boys? Fight time. It is time for the picks, ladies and gentlemen. Hammer them. I'm ready, Maddie. Bring them on. Yeah, so uh, first fight of the night, we have a possible system play. System play, too. We got Uh-oh. a system play. What Good kind of system? Oh. Amorim 
minus 275 going up against Sam Hughes at plus 188. System play. Amorim? That's tight. Maybe? Maybe? Maybe. I don't know. She's borderline, is she? I, I think I'm trying to remember in my head. I guess when I post this picture, I'll let y'all know. Going up against stank-ass Sam Hughes. That's what I've been calling her. She's just boring, and she's just not my... Uh, it's just 7-5 and five in the UFC. And she's getting fed to a fucking savage. All right? Uh, Amareem, Her, By the way, her nickname... Th- this is weird to me. Her name's Jacqueline. Her nickname is Jackie. Yeah, no shit. It's, it's always like that. That's not a nickname. <laughs> That's actually what just people would call you. His name's Tyra. I call him T. It's just a nickname. That's no. That, that's yeah. not that kind of. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like your name's Matthew. You call Matt. Jacqueline's a Jackie. That's not a fucking fun nickname. But she is a fun fighter. Six and zero in her professional career. All six are finishes. And Come we love a woman, a woman that finishes. We, we love a woman it's that finishes. It's very rare. But we always love a woman that can finish. It's, it, it's the best. It is. It's the best. It is. Uh, it is. It is. Um, so, really, I mean, what's Sam Hughes done besides beat Elise Reed? And she had, like, a majority decision win against another bum in this division. Other than that, I think she's got four. She's two and four in the UFC. I know that. Yeah. Uh, Estella Nunez. I was going to say she beat she beat Nunez, and obviously not that Nunez. And not even the other Nunez, which is Nina Nunez, her yeah. wife. Right? She beat Estella Nunez, and then she had a majority decision win. Or no, that was the majority, and then she beat Elise Reed, in which I think Elise Reed went in as a heavy favorite, and yep. Sam Hughes was a big dog, yep. right? And she just went in and wrestled her. She is not going to be able to wrestle this girl. This girl is a jujitsu jujitsu specialist. I think she's going to take her out. I think she finishes her honestly. Jeez. Minus two seventy five is is pretty light. Going I, against, the, I mean, we got a stay- system. Yeah, oh, that is correct. So the system, guys, it doesn't play here. Sometimes you got to use your brain. The women's systematic play of the dog, always taking the dog. My play, it's my system. Uh, it doesn't apply here because I just Sam Hughes is brutal, bro. Seven and five. Like I said, these, she has no notable wins. These are not notable wins. She has four notable losses. Amarim finishes fights. The number's great, and especially because it's a women's fight, you know you're going to get plus money on any type of finish here. Yep. So. From what I've seen out of this girl on the tape, tape says I might catch me a nice little arm bar because I think Sam Hughes is going to get cute and try to take her down, and it's just going to be bad news for her. I think she might even get it done off her back. So give me Jacqueline, Jackie, Amareem, minus 275. Hammer him. Oh, we're not done. Gonna be a lot of that button tonight, boys. Just to make it clear, gonna gonna be. I got a lot of prop specials for this card. All right. I mean, I'm just jo- I'm Jonesing for this card. I can't believe I gotta wait an extra week for this shit. So starting the night off like we always do with a prop special. Give us Jacqueline, Jackie, and Marine by submission. Hammer him. T. See you at the top. See you at the top. Always gotta start off with a see you at the tops. Up next, who we got? Up next. We have Shai Lin Nerdambeka at minus 220 going up against Steve Garcia Ooh, at plus 180. The mean machine. What I call him last time out, Steve the not so the not oh so mean God. machine. But he went out there and he hammered Chase Hooper. Uh that was a fight. I think Hooper went in as a big favorite. Yep. They just can't figure that guy out. I tell you right now, Nerdambeka ain't no Chase Hooper. Right, and now uh, uh, Shylon, his last fight, we all know, it was a little tricky. Came in there with Kraus and the crew in Ocean's Eleven and tried, you know, fucking snuck a quick one by you with your uh, Derek Minner broken leg. Knew he was going to get yeah. knocked out in the first fucking minute. I smashed the knockout. I obviously have no knowledge. I wasn't, I'm not in the James Kraus fucking Discord sucking dick with Jeff Molina. That's not what I'm doing. I knew it was going to be a knockout. I just thought Derek Minner sucked. But come to find out, all this shit was fucking fixed. Right? It's a dirty fucking game. This dude can hit, though. And he can go three rounds, and he can win a decision. Mean Machine, who did he beat, bro? He beat our boy, the fake Charlie Charlie Olives. Charlie Ontiveros. <laughs> That's our boy, right? Yeah. I mean, that he's just too inconsistent. This guy's not Hooper. Uh, he lost to Louis, what's, uh, Louis Pena. What's my guy's name? That's the crazy Bob Ross. 
Yeah. That's yeah, meth, meth head Bob Ross. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think he beat his wife too, like, yeah. right? Or yeah. allegedly. I, I don't yep. know. Uh, he lost him in his debut. I think that's kind of a similar fight here, but I just I think Shylon's going to be too much for him, man. I, he, yeah, I'm really in the same, same exact boat. Uh, still, I got that picture in my head of Stevie Garcia just getting fucking dusted. So, yeah. I'm with you on this one as well, man. Well, that was Mahash- Mahashati yeah. dusted his yeah. ass. That's my boy. I just call him Machete. I don't Mahashete. Now yeah. I call him Machete. The motherfucker be slicing through people. Actually, I think he lost his last time out. But against the mean machine, he did not. So for me, uh, the number's about right. Should be right around here. Yeah. I'll, t- I'll take Shylon Nurdenbeck, minus 220. Hammer him. <laughs> the hits keep on coming. I, I mean, I, I think I have to. If you're going to play this, he can, like I said, Nurdenbeck can win a decision. But I've seen Mean Machine get his chin dusted. And I know... Nurdenbeck has the hands to dust this fool. So give me Shylon Nurdenbeck without the James Krause 1% crew by knockout TK or DQ. Hammer him. Hmm? Hey. See you at the top. Somebody cue up the fucking little James Krause fucking whisper picture right up here. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to add that. Yeah. What do we got? Next up, we have a uh, women's fight against <laughs> Cynthia Calvillo, oh. plus 240. Dud. Going up against Lupi Godinez, Dud. At minus 300. Dud. <laughs> Ain't much to say about this one. Calvillo's you know, lost four straight, four guys. Four straight. She's lost four straight. This was the one I'm just going to, like, I wanted to just totally skip over and be a dickhead, but I'm not going to. I forgot a couple things. Yeah, she lost four straight. She stinks. That's my note. Uh, I like Lupi, man. Yeah. I've been, I'm a fan. I don't think she does like, she had a tough time with Angela Hill last time out. I don't think she does anything great, but I do think she does everything better than Calvillo at this point in her career. So I don't really have anything more to say. You? No. Yeah, <laughs> fuck that. Give me Lupita Go- Godinez, minus 300. Hammer him. Oh, the pop gods are out today. I might hit 10 props on this fucking card. I might. Actually, I think i go like six fights without a prop, but the first three, I, I got to give it to you. It's women's MMA, guys. This is where the system plays. My system is if you're going to play the favorite, if you're not Valentina or Amanda, you take them by decision. Give us Lupita or Lupi Godinez by decision. Hammer them. See him at the top again, See him man. The top. No shit. I don't. I I think this card's almost too good to be goddamn true. I know. I like, feel, I, like, I feel, I feel like, super confident. I feel like I'm gonna win some big money. Yeah, I do man. too. I'm super fucking confident yeah. right now. All right, what do we got? Well, I mean, how can you not be confident in this pink floral, baby? I'm on Miami Beach. Next up, we have Gerald Mearshart at plus one fifty five, going up against Joe Pfeiffer at minus one eighty. Body bags. Act like Joe Pfeiffer. You should. You all should act like Joe Pfeiffer and go ahead and get yourself a goddamn W. Have Dana pay your fucking rent for a year. Uh, <laughs> that was dope of him. Uh, he had a he had that crazy arm break. His first chance he got in the contender series got slammed. Yeah. Oh, I mean slammed, bro. Yeah. His arm just went. Doom. His yep. opponent was like, oh, his opponent was uh, Dustin Stoltzfus, who d- was who did it to him. And after that, he gets the arm broken. He goes back. I think he gets a W. Um, against Alan Adamovsky, yeah. right? I'm just trying, I can't try to say yeah. his goddamn name, Adamovsky. right? Adamovsky. Yeah, yeah. It was his debut, and he killed him with the right hand, man. Yep. Uh, he, everybody likes it. He's got power. He clearly can strike. Prone to getting subbed, though. If you go back, he he, he, he got slammed. Like I said, I'm not saying he would have lost the fight had he not broken his arm, but he was probably on his way to maybe losing that fight. Maybe the arm break was... Was very helpful for him in getting a second chance. Going, hey, oh, you broke your arm. Let's, let's go out there and let's prove something. Guy's got hands, but man, he's going up against a killer of a jujitsu player, man. Yep. As much as a lot of people only remember Gerald getting their introduction to Gerald was him getting absolutely killed by Hamzat within seconds, yep. like getting his chin fucking knocked off, right? Directly after that, Mirshart went on to win four straight. Three straight. Three, was it three, three or four? Straight. I think it was four. No, three four straight. Four of his next five, three and straight. And then you no, know who he lost to. Correct. He lost to Jocko yeah. by, a, by a shitty-ass decision. Yep. But those four of those five, all by submission, bro. Mm-hmm. So he's coming in still probably with some high confidence. Because that Jocko fight was stupid. It was a point fight, and we know how we feel about Jocko. Thank yep. God somebody got his ass out of there last yeah. time. I forgot who it was. I should I should have I should have that guy memorialized. I should start doing what Ariel does, memorializing yep. guys that I fucking yep. like doing that. Um, 
he's clearly better in the jiu-jitsu department. This is your classic striker grappler matchup. Mm -hmm. I'm just afraid for, for Gerald because I think if Pfeiffer lets those hands go early like Hamza did, this is going to be a, it's gonna lights, be a quick, out. lights out quick yeah. fight. Because yeah. Jocko, again, going back to him, he's just a point fighter. He's sticking outside. He's not really throwing power. You know what I mean? And he, he'll, he'll even hug you on the fence for 20 minutes. He doesn't care. Can Pfeiffer get in into, into Mearshart's face without being taken down, without getting down to the ground? Like, what, what can he do? To stay away from that because he's gonna have to. Yeah, I think Pfeiffer can knock his ass out. I want him to knock his ass out because I think that's where I'm leaning toward the betting line. The fact that he's almost two to one as a favorite, he's minus one eighty here. The fact that he's that high as for his record and and what he's really proven compared to what Mearshart's been in there with, it's a little crazy. He's got a lot of hype, Gerald Mearshart, a, a guy who's kind of known for just fucking taking that hype away. He always comes in as an underdog. I feel like he's like he the always, new gatekeeper. He always he's gets that submission on him. Pfeiffer, I think he's just he hasn't really done anything to prove like, oh my god, this guy's amazing yet. Mm -hmm. But this is a, this is his gatekeeper type of fight this where one, Jared Mearshart. We call it in, this in, is a test in gambling and blackjack. We call this the hump hand. Yeah, like if we can get this, okay, we're we're over the hump, and now we can start flowing. If not, you're just doing this battle up back and forth. Yep. This is his hump hand. He needs to get over this hump. I don't know where you're going. I actually think you're leaning one way, but uh, I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna so go with what I, I came in you go with. You know what? Give me body bags, pipe for minus one eighty. Hammer him. <laughs> Another prop. That's four in the first four, guys. One of them's down to hit. Give me Joe Body Bags Piper by knockout TK or DQ. Hammer him. Where are you going? I say he passes the test, man. Wow. So top of that wow, one. you pussy. But I won't be top. I won't be surprised if Mearshart somehow fucking pulls off a submission. But I'm rocking with my boy Piper with the knockout. That's what I will be betting. T is a Francis is a big old pussy. Get out of here. Scaredy cat. Won't go against me, kids. Hey, listen, I got the same picks. I know. He's copycat. Listen, if you want, listen, you, the people that are watching, they should be looking at it like, okay, both these guys agree. You know, this yeah, might be one of those weeks. Yeah, we both look like weeks. assholes. Sometimes you should go the other way these, just so we don't look like an asshole. Listen, this might be God. one of those weeks. I'm feeling confident this week. Guy wants this. Guy wants us to look like jerk offs. We're going to go do it. I guess, you know what? I appreciate it. You go down, you go down with the captain. Exactly. We just fucking let the thing sink, right? Yep. Uh, who we got next, Maddie? I hope it's a good one. Oh, they're all good. We got a fan favorite. Oh, I know who this is. The big boy. Chris Barnett. <laughs> plus 190. Love this fella. Chase Sherman at minus 230. Love this fella. Guys, I know you all looked at this line like I, like we did and said, what the hell's going on? This is one of those ones. I'm no longer scared of my Terrence McKinney because I got off the schneid with my love of, I think my John Jones pick was like, I was so heavy on that, that I'm like, all right, I'm not worried about the line anymore. Scaring me. Okay. That Terrence McKinney got me. I will not allow it to happen anymore. The fact that Chris Barnett is plus 190 is amazing to me against guys. Guys, he's facing Chase Sherman. The guy loves to, to die. It's his favorite thing to go in there and just lose fights. Barnett went in there last time. His fiance had just died. Am I am I correct? Do you guys remember this? I'm pretty sure it was him. It yeah. Was, it was no, no. It did it. crazy. No. It was a crazy story. We can look it up. If I'm wrong, Google it. I got a couple days to edit this shit. Uh, <laughs> but I'm saying I'm pretty sure Chris Barnett lost his like fiance or his girlfriend, maybe even his wife. I think during training camp, bro. And he went out there and put on an absolute performance against Jake Collier. Got yep. his ass out of there in the second round, man. Yep. He's two and two in the UFC. He, I just think if you can go through what you went through last fight, and then they give you Chase Sherman, who's lost five of his last six. Ch Chase Sherman's only beat one guy in his last six fights. T. If you had to guess in this division, who was the one guy he beat? Ah, uh, Jared Vandera. Oh, correct! Ding, ding, ding! Uh, That's uh, number that. one on the board. Of course, look he knocked that. out Jared Vandera. I'm not going to count that even as a fucking win. I'll say he's just lost his last five. And he's coming in at minus two thirty. Yeah. Minus 230. How is Chase Sherman minus 230, man? And Collier is better fight, is Collier's a, better fighter, a way better fighter way than Chase better Sherman, than Sherman, in my opinion. Yeah. That's just me. Oh, yeah. I think Barnett get, will just get busy. He's way smaller here. Yeah. Well, he's smaller than everybody. And then a lot of guys, yeah, at this division. But, I mean, Chase is, I think, 6'4", man. He's 5'9". So, we're talking like a 7-inch height difference. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be tough for, let's say, Barnett to get those high kicks. Look, listen, he gets those no, he legs gets up, up there. He does. Quick. He really does get them up there. <laughs> I think he may have to do a lot of damage low. Yep. Um, I don't know if Chase is going to be able to just 
grab him and take him down. But I think I think Barnett might get his ass. Out. I cannot give another prop. I can't. I can't give another prop. I can't go five for five props right. because the number's so damn good. Yeah. I'm taking Chris Barnett plus 190, guys. I know you all are, too. Hammer him. Listen, you can't give the people props, but I will. Oh, yeah. Play that shit. <laughs> We gotta give all our people's props. Come this on, is dude. my guy, Chris Barnett, plus one ninety nine. We're going with the knockout TKO or DQ over Chase Sherman. Gets it done, spinning back kick to the fucking jaw, then does a front flip right on the canvas, breaks Hammer the canvas, him. and we and we fucking end the event. <laughs> kind of like when Big Show got fucking <laughs> taken off. And the, the ring collapsed. The whole ring collapsed. I, can, I think Barnett may be the first guy to collapse the entire <laughs> UFC canvas if he does a split. In and the then we ring. call it a night there. Chris uh, Barnett by knockout. Hammer him. I gave you all those sounds during the rant, too. Good. <laughs> Good. All right. Uh, you were correct on the wife, by the way. It was a wife. Uh, yeah. Wow. See? Brutal. Hey, guys, that's prime time producing on the fly. It took him four minutes for uh, to find that. What a Googler. I need to get me a Jamie. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to go to the depths of Reddit like, to find that story. Like two, two fights ago. Not the what was it? Two, oh, it was two fights ago? Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, at least I was wrong. Well, I was right about one thing. I was wrong about there. So he ended up losing that fight then. I think so. Yeah. Either way, it doesn't matter. All right, Maddie, what we got next? Next up, another women's fight. Michelle Waterson Gomez. Plus oh, one fifty. Oh, Guess who? Going up against Luana Pinheiro. Minus 175. Uh-oh. The rare double, it's tight, T. The rare double, it's tight. This could be another systematic play, T. It could be. Waterson is plus one. I refuse to call her Waterson Gomez, by the way. It's never going to happen. Uh, <laughs> uh, usually, Again, guys, the, the system is the dogs in the women's fights. But, man, I've been against her in her last couple fights, man. I just, the downtrend, right? Like she's working really good on social media. Like, you could just see, like, you saw Joanna's career kind of flourishing upward in social media. But her actual fighting career was going like this. So if you're gonna make like like Paige, Paige Van Zandt, same thing, right? If you're gonna make more money on social media, I don't expect you to be training as hard. I don't expect you to have the love for the game like you used to have. You're about to be fighting a, a girl like Pinero who's hungry. She wants to be a mark like somebody in the UFC, right? Waterson's already established that. Like she's one of the first ones who who really hit the scene and was like good looking and could fight. And you're like, oh shit, who's this chick, right? Yeah. Um, and she's again, she's a fun social media follow. She rolls with all like John Jones, Holly Holman, and so she's always in the limelight. Yeah, I just see her career going down. I mean, like I Lemos when she fought Lemos, we both came on here. It was like I was hard for me to do, right? Remember, it was almost yeah. like my Cody because yeah. I love Michelle Waterson, bro, big fan. I go, but I just know how good Amanda Lemos is. And I, I predicted on this show she was gonna bury her. She fucking buried. Her. That was one of the easiest dollars I ever made was on that fight. You know, um, again, she, I just think she's gonna be a good stepping stone. For Pinero here, you know she's won eight straight. Six of them, or I think five are by finish, and one of them is like she she got up kicked by Miranda Marco. What's her name? Randall Randa Marco. Randa is Marcos, that her name? Yeah. Got up kicked by her, and they called it a disqualification. I think she up kicked her when she was on the ground. Um, but that obviously tells me homegirl was on top, right? <laughs> she got illegally up kicked. She was yeah. on the ground with her, so she was probably going to go on to win that fight anyway. Another woman who finishes fights. I also know she can go the distance. Her only loss is like early on in her career. I you never Chris fucking Kamar well, Volk lost his first fight of his career, right? You can't really take those things in, in, into consideration as far as I'm concerned. I think Panera should be huge here, man. I think she should be minus three fifty. Like I do. Have you seen Waterston's last couple of fights? It's just not the same girl, man. She, I, I think somebody comes in a little bit of power, a little bit of grappling, and they toss her around. She kind of reminds me of like a, a bad Stephen Thompson female. Like she just thinks she can karate around, dance around, and keep the distance. I don't know. These girls are different, man. These younger chicks, they're up and cut. It's just a different game, man. Yeah. I love Luana Pinero here. I'm sorry, Michelle Waterston. I love you as a human being. And as a person, and I used to love watching you fight, but not on Saturday night. Give me Luana Pinero minus 175. Hammer him. There will be no props. Yeah, so I I mean, in this fight, you got a girl in Luana who's definitely going to be younger. She's hungry, as you said. But I just think Michelle Waterson's been around for a while. 
she's a capable vet. And I just. <laughs> you don't even believe it yourself. You know what, guys? He doesn't give a shit about Michelle Larson. He tried to lie. Uh, see, you see you at the top. Woo. Oh, my God. Guys, you'll have no idea. <laughs> unless I put in. It's the capable vet. I will tell you right now, guys. From the time that he was supposed to make a pick. So right now, it was a lot longer than you think. And I may put oh together a God. super compilation of how funny that just was. So if it looks Holy like shit. we were crying, yes, I clipped that. I had to cut that because we were dying laughing, man, at T's expense. And it was good. Listen, and maybe one day you, you'll see. Listen, she's a capable vet. Woo! Capable vet or vet? vet. Holy shit. Michelle Gutterson. Michelle Gutterson. Uh, <laughs> Michelle Gutterson. <Gardner, laughs> Michelle Gutterson. You guys have no idea. Oh, it was too funny. Ooh. Woo! All right, Matt, what do we got next? Have we finally made it to the... No, we're not even close. Uh, we're almost there. Yeah, we're almost there. Just want to shout out the leech. Uh, he's out of this card due to a spinal injury. Spinal. Was it spi uh, spinal? <laughs> it was spinal. So spinal. Hopefully... He, I uh, broke my back. Speedy recovery. They said he uh, he may need surgery. So. Damn. Yeah, it looked like his whole body needed surgery when yeah, they showed the horrible, video. Man. I feel bad for him. Yeah. That would have so, been a fun fight. I feel like I haven't seen Kies in a while either, so yeah, that would have yeah. been a nice nice fight to watch. He's just such a fun guy. Like, remember when he got choked out by Hamza, then he comes out the next, and he's asking Hamza the questions from... Yeah. No, he, the way he lovely. dresses. I like yeah, the way he dresses. I, lovely, yeah, I think man. he had the white suit on in Vegas last time yep. with, like, the chains. I was like, yeah, it's just, I, I, I like the yeah. guy. I also like Michael Kies. Again, just two big, like... When I say big names, as far as if you're a fan of the sport, they're big names. Like, they're names you instantly recognize. It's not like you don't know what you're getting. And that would have been a fun fight to be had. But, unfortunately, yeah. a lot of these fall off. I mean, think about it. We picked 14 fights last week. Only nine of them went off yep. or some shit, right? Nine or ten. And, and so you don't even know. Some of these could be off. You know, I don't want to jinx it. But Jesus Christ, fucking main event might not go off. And it'll be a Jorge Burns pay-per-view. Yep. <laughs> Which is crazy, because they would do that. Because they think Jorge is such a big pull on pay-per-view. Yep. So... Anyway, what we got next? So next up, we have a middleweight bout. Kelvin Gastelum, minus 105, going up against Chris Curtis, minus 115. The action man. The action man. Uh, this fight, crazy that it's like almost a pick'em. Yeah. Chris Curtis seems to be on the rise. He's got a stock that's going up. Obviously, Gastelum's is coming down. One in five in his last six. But, man, of those five, you know who he's fought, man. The Cannoneers of the world, the Whitakers. Hermanson caught him like lacking heavy and with that heel hook in the yep. first round. But other than that, I mean, the dudes stood in there with everybody for all five and three rounds. It's just right? crazy because you saw the war him and Izzy went through. One of the and... greatest fights ever. Yeah. It should be, I don't know. It should be in the Hall of Fame it's wing there, yep. at some point. Sure. Like, it'll be there because I don't, you can go back and watch it. I mean, it could go either way. That, that fight's nuts. He yeah. could have had Izzy out of there. Izzy could have had him, him out of there. He didn't implement really any wrestling, though. And, and you know he can grapple. Mm -hmm. Like you know, did you did you ever hear him? He he broke it down with Henry. He was like right there when he 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 ends, he's got Izzy rocked and he goes for a takedown and it was a bad takedown attempt. Yep. He doesn't get it and in his head he's like, I'm going to take him down and I'm going to submit him. And, it, and yeah, you may may as well could have, but then you just kept standing up and having a war instead of like going after that takedown, knowing the guy's not a wrestler, right? What is Gaslam going to do? Because only I mean the only guy he really went against that was a big time wrestler. There was Hermanson, right? You know. Yeah. I mean, Whitaker, we all know he can wrestle, but Whitaker would rather strike with you. Yeah, he just pieced him up rabbit, all night long. Pieced him up all night long. It was yeah. an easy victory, easy yeah. dub. Now, action, the action man, 4-1, and one, his only loss was also to Hermanson, but if I'm not mistaken, that was on very short notice. Yeah, that fight and he, was that's, that was the fight that he was pissed off. Remember that fight? Yes. He was so pissed off during the fight and, like, swearing at him, flipping him off. Yep, like, correct. Yeah. That, was, that was very uncharacteristic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, he just got grappled to death. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't even like Curtis had a chance. But we've seen him again. I know, again, I'll say names like Hadolfo Vieira. We know he didn't last long in the UFC, but he had all this problem. Because his jiu-jitsu is world class. Yeah. Still right, outlasts him. Brendan All-In Allen. We know what he's capable of. Curtis beat him, right? Clearly. So, Hermanson is similar to Gastelum. So... I just don't know what Curtis is going to do if he starts getting grappled like that, right? Yeah. It, 
but I don't I don't feel like Kelvin's going to stand up. What kind of Kelvin are we going to see? Curtis you know is just I mean? such a slick boxer, though. Yeah. It's like if he could just and piece up, but Kesslin's head's also like a Vittori. It's made of fucking metal. Yep. And that's what I was going to say, too, is Curtis has some fucking power, man. Like Super this, power. Oh, he, he I think power. he could lights out Gastelum here and maybe not end his, like, career in his career, but just, like, maybe this will be the end of his UFC career. I think Curtis can get him out. Like, like I said, the boxing's too slick, man. If Gastelum tries to get cute and get in there, I mean, Curtis's hands are insane. Yeah. So I, it's, it's not an easy play. It's just easier to take a guy who's four of his last five than to take a guy who's one of his last five, yep. it's, or one of his last six. It's a lot easier for me to go that way. So with this fight being cut down the middle, man, you can give me the action, man. Chris Curtis, minus 115. Hammer him. Bro, I got to see him at the yeah, top. No, you gotta, like, I, see you at the top. Yeah. Very hard to bet Gaslam right now at this point in his career. Just yeah. is. And, and I can't, again, I can't, it's hard to hold that against him because of Cannoneer, Whitaker, Izzy, Hermanson, yep. Till. These are the, all the guys he's fought in those those six fights. I can't be mad at you for that, but I can also just say you winning matters, right? Getting in that winning mindset, seeing being 0 for 8 from the field in the playoffs and then hitting one free throw, just seeing it go in once helps. I, I don't know what he's going to do here. Yeah. I don't. So I'm, I'm with, with the you. action, man. Yeah. Bring it on, Maddie. Main card. First fight, we have Raul Rosas Jr., Ooh. minus 220, going up against Christian Rodriguez, plus 180. Got to tell you, we all know since Rosas come in, bigger favorite. Like, I don't know what his number was against Jay Perrin, but I think it was like minus five, 600. It was pretty big, right? This tells you a ton. And I, and I had told you guys right before we came on air, I said, hey, Christian Rodriguez is for real. Like, this dude's not no bullshit. He's not no bullshit at He's got all. He's one yeah. loss, and that loss is to our boy Jonathan Pierce. To beat Jonathan Pierce, and he, took, and he went the distance with him. Yeah. Right, it was unanimous, but like, you know, you know, Pierce is Pierce. He's a nasty guy. Mm -hmm. Raul coming in, still, what, 19 years old, minus 220. Chris Rodriguez is on, like, the similar path. It's just he's not propped up because he's the youngest. He's 24. He's a little bit more seasoned. I think he's he's obviously had just as much, I think, octagon time in reality, right? Both each had two fights, maybe, three fights. I'm just saying it's going to be a tough, tougher night for Raul. I think it should be. I don't want it to be. I don't know about you. I want this kid to succeed. Yep. I want this guy to be the youngest champion ever. I want to see start seeing some records be broken in this in this uh, UFC world. Like I want to see somebody take that thing away from John Jones. Like records are meant to be broken. It creates excitement, yep. right? Yep. Why wouldn't you want this kid to keep winning? I want him to keep winning. I just think this may be a tough fight for him. And if he loses, I won't take any stock out of him. No. I won't be down. I'm just going to say, oh, it's a 19-year-old kid. He learned some lessons. I guarantee he's a very smart, like, IQ fight IQ-wise, kid's dynamite. Yeah. Kid's dynamite. He can, he'll stand with you. Go to the ground. How slick was he on the ground in that in that Crazy, debut? Man. I mean, he was just amazing. I just I just want to transition mention. to transition without just just like didn't seem had to have any flaws. Man. Yeah, at this age, it's crazy. And I just want to mention his, like his attitude, and oh, it just amazing. feels like he's like built for this. Like he's not. Yep. I, now, did he kick off the the main event last no, time? Was he, he in was, the main card was the he, last I time? I think he might have been. Or are we just trying? I to think play he might have been the feature prelim. Feature prelim. I think it was been, feature prelim. Been, prelim. Now he's in the main card. And it's like well, maybe wrong, but I don't know. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I think he was the feature prelim, but it's just interesting to see because his attitude and everything. He just he it doesn't seem like this guy's gonna get nervous or have some jitters. He may have some jitters, but the way he's been walking, talking, and and the action he does in the fucking octagon, this guy's built for this shit, man. I, I love him. I agree. I just and obviously we all think he's gonna go out there and maybe walk over guys and finish them and stuff. I think I think maybe we'll see something different out of this fight. So that's why. I still want him to keep winning. Yep. I think I think he can easily just again piece you up in the feet, and he can uh, and he can definitely definitely do his thing on the ground. So he'll have no problems there. It's a matter of can C Rod maybe put some hands in his face, maybe touch him up a couple times, make him feel yeah. like what Bo Nickel hasn't felt yet. Somebody just get getting that first shot, going oh shit, yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I yep. like Makayev did like on his second fight. I think it was Gordon or Charles Johnson. One he called me like whoa. Stay the course and keep going. Let's see if Raul can face some adversity. And I think he may fa face some adversity in this fight, albeit not for maybe long. But for now, minus 220, the young gunner, Raul Rosas Jr., minus 220. Hammer him. <laughs> uh, we're back with another one. This is number five on the goddamn night. 
I just said he may face some adversity, and I think a lot of people are going to be betting him to get the finish. I think this will be one of those nights where you got to back off a little bit. He shows you that he can go all 15 minutes and just dominate, dominate, dominate. Give me Raul Rosas Jr. by decision. Hammer him. I'm taking him by submission. I say he gets it done rear naked choke. Wow. To be specific. Hammer him. Somebody tell him they don't pay him for specifics. But if they did, it should be like 150 to 1. That'd be fun. I'd play yeah. that shit. It's like getting the correct score in a, in a game, yep. right? Those are like wild odds. Yep. They should give us odds by like what type of submission. Shit would get wild. That was not an omoplata. Yep. <laughs> right? It's just some dumbass shit. Uh, that was a twister. Uh, all right. What do we got next? Next up, we have Kevin Holland, minus 280, going up against Santiago Ponzinibbio. At plus 230. Our boy, Kay Holland. He's back, coming off. Uh, that's kind of a quick turnaround. No, yeah. was it Orlando in December? Or yep. was that January? It was it December, right? December. It was the last card of the year. All right, it's not that quick, quick of a turnaround because we'll be in. That's the very beginning of April. Five months. I mean, I'm saying quick turnaround for the type of fight he was in. Yeah. I mean, that fight with Wonder Boy. Broke his, did he break both hands or just one hand? I think, he, I think no, they each broke a hand. Yeah. A hand. I don't think they both, both broke. Two hands. That'd and I be just, wild. I, Kevin Holland's my guy, man. It's just my like I just want to see him fight smarter, man. Why do you, you, <laughs> who chooses to have a kickboxing match with <laughs> Wonder Boy, man? <laughs> like, why did you not go for takedowns? And I know you want to be. I know he's a fan favorite and everything. And maybe he, maybe he doesn't want to be a title contender and just be an entertaining fighter, which. You know that those are people. Some guys make, make very good some, careers being Dana White's like boy of like Gaethje, hey, just step You talk yes. about Gaethje making the money that he did. Nate Diaz, although he never was a champion, he still made a ton of money being an entertaining How guy. How you promote a draw. yourself exactly. matters. Even like so, like a, real quick, a guy like Volk. It's like yeah, you at first everybody's like whatever. He starts doing cooking with Volk. Starts going on flagrant. Yep. So, oh, I like this guy a ton. Like yep. they, you, you got to promote yourself. We can't like you. If we don't see you, mm -hmm. if you don't invest in yourself, how the fuck can I like you? Kevin Holland's out here fucking being a superhero in bars and uh, helping people from getting their cars stolen. Yep. How do you not like this guy? Yep. And he tells you about it right after. That's promoting yourself. I don't care how you have to do it, right? Who's he fighting? A guy like Ponzinibbio, who, like, the fight fans, we all know. And we're like, oh, he's a, he's a fun fighter to watch. Yeah. He's exciting. Yeah. But... Kevin Holland will be around making a lot more money long after Ponzinibbio is not around because of the marketing, right. right? A lot of these people on this car we know from almost almost from marketing. Joe Pfeiffer, B. Joe Pfeiffer, right? Chris Barnett doing the split and doing the dancing. Yeah. That is all promoting yourself. You know what I'm saying? When I yell in a fucking... And you see a clip and he's yelling about Marab's... That's promoting. We're, that's what we're doing, right? Yeah. Essentially, yeah. you got to put some flair onto it, right? So we're always going to be Kevin Holland guys here. I don't think he should be a three to one favorite. Like minus two eighty is a little extensive. Mm. But the way Ponzinibbio has looked in his last couple, I mean, what do we got? I mean, he had that win against Alex Morona. Alex Morona's a fucking teacher. Yeah, like, you know I what I mean. I don't put a lot of stock. Guy's into just that a jujitsu teacher in his hometown. He's good with the kid. He's like a good dude. You know what I mean? And I don't put a ton of stock in. He lost to Michelle Payne, which I guess I get it. A lot of you could say it was a. Could have went either way in the judges' scorecard. I remember yep. that fight because yep. I took me Michelle to win by finish, and he, he didn't. He didn't come through with any of the flying double spin, triple axle back kicks, you know, than the yep. wild shit that he does, the, yeah. the flipping front kick. Uh, he lost to Jeff Neal in a split decision. So this guy's just a split decision monster. Lee is the last time he had a bad fight was when Leach knocked his ass out. And so he's obviously prone to these things, but he can obviously just go three rounds and kind of dance with you. I want to see Kevin Holland get after it this fight. I want to see him get aggressive. Um, he can use his distance, obviously. He's the longer fighter. And I'd like to see him use it, tap him up, maybe get in there and get a fucking goddamn finish. Because if I see another split decision in a Ponzinibbio fight, I'm going to lose my goddamn mind. Yeah. So with that said, give me the national hero, Kevin the Trailblazer Holland at minus 280. Hammer him. There will be no prop. There will be a prop. Play that shit. <laughs> Going with Kevin Holland here. It just defies me. He had the power at 185 coming down to 170. I still think he's got that pop in his punches. And I say he gets it done here, man. I, I say he catches Ponsonibio maybe with the overhand right. little overhand right. Stuns him, then a little ground and pound, club and sub type of deal. He ain't subbing nobody. <laughs> nah, he's not. I'm uh, I'm going to go with Kevin Holland here. I say he gets it done, KO, TKO, or DQ. 
hammer him. Look at that, huh? That motherfucker's never subbing anybody. <laughs> no, he, he didn't go to fucking Khabibistan or, yeah. you know, whatever he called it. All right, we're getting closer and closer. Yeah, we got three fights left. This one, Rob Font, plus Ooh. 150, going up against Adrian Yanez, minus 175. Wow. Good fight, man. Another bantam. Like, this could, this could be a fight night type of, you know, main event. Yes, but because I think they used Font already for that this year, they will refrain from doing <laughs> yeah. it again, yeah. and they will just stuff it on this absolutely just this awesome card that I uh, wish they brought to New York like they're supposed to instead of bringing it down to the most dangerous place in the United States right now, Miami. Wear your vests if you're down there. It's getting wild. <laughs> um... Adrian Yanez, guys, 5-0 in the UFC, four more finishes. Yep. Right? What, there's, I mean, you have to open your eyes to that, especially in this division. Rob Font, this guy's only been finished one time in his career, right? It was, I think it was like five or six years ago. Looked like he almost was going to get finished by Rivera there. Uh, you know? that, well, that one, that was just one of those just absolute, that was a war, essentially, that was one-sided. But, but that's what you got to think is, did he leave a piece of himself in that ring that night? You I don't know, know what I mean? I feel like Font does that every every time. Yeah. I mean, but, like, so he beats Cody unanimously. He, uh, Ricky Simone, who's, you know, obviously making a, another Looks little real bit good of lately, a, yep. making a little run up there. Yep. But he goes out, he loses to Jose Aldo and Marlon Vera. Obviously, those are, like, good losses. And they're not like he got knocked out or killed. Again, I just wanted to look it up. It was Pedro Munoz. Pedro Munoz is the only guy to ever finish this, to ever finish him, but it was a minute ago. And it was like a guillotine choke. I don't see Giannis doing it, but Giannis got some crazy power, doggies, for this division. Yeah. I could see him. Both these guys have that boxing uh, type of style. Yeah, but Giannis, think, Giannis can kick, baby. Like, that's what it, I don't, Font ain't, Font's going to box you. Yeah. Uh, he, he ain't going to do with the legs what Giannis can do. Yeah. Also, I, I think Giannis here has the speed advantage as 100%. well. 100%. And that plays a big part Which when it comes to boxing. Which is crazy because Font's quick as fuck. Yeah. And I just that think plays, he's slowing down. Yeah. That plays a big part when it comes to boxing as well. As you just said, Giannis is going to mix it up with the leg kicks as well. And with Font being heavy on that lead foot boxing, maybe in for a tough night, man. I, I think what. he's going to be. And I oh, the, the number is a little bit tasty, yeah. if I'm being honest with you. Minus 175. I think I think this could easily be a minus 250 Giannis, and I'd still play him. Yeah. I think Font is now turning into, like we said earlier, he's turning into one of these gatekeepers. Right, he's like, if you can get past him, okay, we'll propel you up a little top yep. six, top seven fight. You know what I mean? I think Yanez is not the future of the division, no, but he's but definitely he's... he can establish himself as a as a top six, seven guy right now. Yeah, because I mean, let's be real. I don't I don't have the division the rankings in front of me because it kind of doesn't matter. But like, is fucking Dominic Cruz like eighth or something? Like, is there there's a couple guys in there that don't even belong in there right now? Where I think if Yanez goes out and gets this done. He's he's right there. Yeah. He's right there with the rest of these guys. So, with that being said, I think it's going to be a nice, easy one. But I think it'll be by decision. I'm not going to give you the prop. I just think uh, Giannis outpoints him uh, for three rounds. Maybe he gets it done early, but minus 175, I don't need it. It's going to be Adrian Giannis, a minus 175, boys. Hammer him. Try to give the people a prop. <laughs> Dude, we're just, try. We're just, just trying. No, no, no. One. I'm saying like we're you trying know. to mix in as many props as we can. Yeah. Since you're not going to give him a prop, I will. I'm personally betting Adrian Giannis to get it done by decision, uh, just to juice up that uh, number a little bit course. more. Okay, nothing wrong with that. A little bit more. Hammer. Him. I was just saying, it's just like I don't see him getting finished. Rob Font's still not at the level of oldness where I'm like, oh, he's fading. Like he's like gonna a get sun knocked out. Type. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Even though he he looked okay. Yeah. I mean, he lasted as long yeah. as he could. I just I don't see Font being finished. I still don't in this fight. But it wouldn't shock me. Mm -hmm. But I'm not gonna put put it out there as a bet. Yeah. So decision's a good play. Like that's probably how I'll end up betting this fight. Yeah. yeah. Where are we, Maddie? Yeah, we're at the co-main event of the evening. I love how every, no matter what, whoever says that, if you're a fan, you all say it in that cadence. <laughs> just, I mean, so do you, I do. We all do. I mean, I've been evening. doing it for like eight years. It's yeah. just main event. Like, I don't, come on. Like, it's time. I, you guys talk about, like, let's get ready to rumble, like, back in, like, my day. No, no, it's time is the greatest thing of all time. Yeah. So, fuck that. Bring it on, Maddie. Absolute barn burner. We got Woo! Gilbert Burns, minus 430, going up against... King of Miami himself, Jorge Gamebred Masvidal, oh, plus 330. I thought he was talking about me, the king of Miami. 
Oh, <laughs> Jesus, I'm the king of Orlando. <laughs> All right, we got Dorino, baby. Yep. We got Game Bread. We got big odds on Game Bread here. We got two guys that know each other very, very well, training the same damn gym. What do we got here? I mean, is Gilbert going to come out and wrestle? Because if they strike, I don't know. I've been thinking about this for the last, like, five or six days going, if they stand up in exchange, I can see Jorge putting him out. But I can also see Gilbert really just grappling him to death like he did Stephen Thompson. I could see that. Be, I could see this being a mirror image of Gilbert and Stephen Thompson where Gilbert just goes, I, I don't want to play. I just bring you down for three rounds because it's only a 15-minute fight. He's been in five, five-round fights. Right, this is not a five-round fight, right, even though it's a co-main. Exactly. No. So for three rounds, if I'm Gilbert and I want to just make sure my name is still in this conversation, I can go out there and dominate him. But I think in the back of his head, he thinks he needs a crazy finish. Just hearing him talk throughout the week here, I've, I've, I'm have i getting the vibe like he definitely wants a finish. Jorge's only been subbed once. You can get to the ground and you can think you're going to sub this guy. I know he's only been knocked out once, and it was just recently. And what, what does that do to a man like we always say? Like, how did he leave a piece of himself in there that night? Maybe. But, man, I think striking-wise, they, they, they kind of balance each other out. I think if Gilbert wants to go to the ground and ragdoll him, maybe that could happen. Where, where, do you, where do you see this thing going? All right, I'll take this away. Here we go. So we got Gilbert Burns here looking to wrestle. Back in my head, I'm thinking he's going to maybe come out with that same strategy, as you said, with when Stephen Thompson, you know, looking to grapple and everything. But you got a guy in Masvidal who's been around so long, just got knocked out. And if you listen now, did you listen to that Rogan pod? I listened to that not only for entertainment, but basically just to see where Mindset. his head said to yeah. And this guy sounds like he's he's his, he's there. He's back. He went to a dark place. He got himself out of it. He's been training like a fucking madman. And it sounds like he's hungrier than ever. I'm liking what I'm hearing out of Jorge right now. He doesn't sound like a guy that's going to go in there and be hesitant. I feel like he's going to look for absolute fucking murder this weekend. And with Masvidal, I mean, you got a guy in Bo Nickel who's training with Masvidal. You got Masvidal training at ATT where constantly he knows that Gilbert's going to look to wrestle here because I think this fight is tailor-made for Masvidal to get the knockout if Gilbert Burns stands on the feet with him he's faster he's a he's just the better striker when it comes to that Gilbert Burns has that right hand that he caught Osman with he's caught Usman with but Usman also knocked Gilbert down with a jab Gilbert has been knocked out in the past before and I say Jorge plus 330 man it's tough it's tough because you got Burns here, minus 430. It's like, Vegas, what are you doing here? But essentially, I'm going with them, man. I'm taking the dog wow. here, Jorge Gamebred Masvidal, plus 330. But play that fucking prop special, man. <laughs> Smash, we're juicing it up, man. Like plus 700. I told you the mentality is different. I'm saying Masvidal is coming for murder here. Taylor made stand up, Gilbert. You better take it to the ground because Jorge's gonna piece you up. And I say essentially he gets it done here. Jorge game bread Masvidal by knockout TKO or DQ gets it done over Gilbert Burns. Give it to me. Hammer him. Wow. That's what I'm going with. 305. Uh oh. Stand, sit the fuck down. Give me Gilbert Dorino Burns, minus 430. And matter of fact, throw in Gilbert Burns by submission. Because he's going to take him down, and he's going to keep him there. I'm done. You people. Hammer him. Jumping on a bandwagon I've been on for all these years. Not tonight. Mr. 305 goes down. Bring in Pitbull. Go watch the main event from last week. You I guys don't care. See Part two. Part two, this guy gets crushed. Watch. We'll see. <laughs> Go ahead. We have made it to the main event of the evening. Oh, we've been here before. Alex Pereira, plus 125, going up against Israel Adesanya, minus 150. All right. Well, we were here before. I went with Pereira by knockout. You went with Izzy. By decision. By decision. <laughs> by de which is exactly what would have happened had mine not happened. Yep. Nothing has changed in between other than we all figured out that Pereira is the best Instagram follow on the planet. Oh, my God. You got to love this guy, Without man. talking, 
No, we, just gestures. Just gestures. <laughs> just gestures. Simple just gestures. I've never seen a more intimidating man who doesn't speak. It's fucking insane. Intimidating and funny, man. Like, it's just. I want to talk about this. This guy, let's say he retains this, whatever, we'll get in the pick in a minute. Yeah. If he retains this, this type of dude could go up to 205. And from what they talk about, I don't know if you've heard about this guy. They're talking like he he would easily make heavyweight and like Bro, be able to fight at heavyweight. He's massive. <laughs> he's, like just he's, imagine somebody doing. Let's say he sneaks out of here, out of this one before Hamza gets in there, right? Right. Let's just say in Bo, Bo Nickel, right? Let's just yeah. say prayer gets this and goes, ah, fuck the rest of this vision. I'll move up now. I don't want to do the nasty weight cut. I'll go to two hundred five because that also looks tasty. Because let's be real, if him and Jamal Hill just start throwing, Ooh. if him and Jamal Hill go at it and just start throwing, I'm 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 not gonna not bet Pereira. Like, he's just more technical. He's been doing it longer, like, on that level. And Jamal Hill's not going to wrestle him. So if we're going to stand up, I'm taking a dude that's been doing stand-up since he was a fucking three-year-old, right? So, and then if he, I'm not saying he can beat John Jones, but let's say Jones slides out and then Pereira looks around and goes, oh, ain't nobody here either. <laughs> Boom, he slides in. That would be the most impressive, like, even if he got the double. Like, if he goes up and does, being at higher weight classes to me, like, what Jones has done, Jones didn't do it at the same time. So it's different, yeah. right? It took three years off. But, like, if Pereira went from... And got this belt at 185, keeps it. Slides up to 205, takes it from Hill. That would be way more impressive, I think, than any of them. Just simply because of the larger men at these divisions. Like, when you go up to 205, now you're talking about big boys. Yeah. Right? You're talking about guys with heavy hitter, one-punch power, which he also has. Yeah. So, I, I just want to state that this man is super dangerous. Like, he doesn't belong in this division. No. It was like... He's so much bigger than Izzy, bro. Like, he's just... That just his bone structure, everything about this man is just fucking solid. Yeah, like he just, it's crazy. His weight cut like last week. Yep. I don't know if you guys. Yep. Yeah, oh yeah. That. Well, he always does. Yep. I mean, what do you lose? Twenty three in the last like day and a half. The last time That's out, insane. it's insane. I think they say he walks around like two sixty five or something like that, bro. He's a big fucking boy. Bro, if he walks around two sixty five, I'll fucking jump out this fucking. I'll jump <laughs> off a bridge right now. He might walk around like two fifteen. I was gonna say two twenty. Ah, I, I think he fought. He fought two nineteen. <clears throat> Yeah, which he probably uh, yeah yeah. So what I'm saying, so like then you got a guy like Izzy who tries to go up right and can't even make the weight of the gain right. He he weighed it at 194 against John guys. Yeah. That's 11 pounds difference. Like we didn't think that what happened was gonna happen. You're out of your goddamn mind yeah. because that that 11 pounds fucking matters when you are in these higher weight classes. All of that shit matters. They make these weight classes for a goddamn reason, right? So I don't know what's changed in these six months for me. I still see Izzy going out there and dancing and maybe putting it on him a little bit, but you can't wait till the last 10 seconds of the first round. And then the next three just kind of float around and you're doing your thing because you, in the back of his head, he knows at any second this could happen. If I'm, I'm not Izzy, none of us are, but like if I'm just taking it from like a strategic standpoint, why wouldn't you just go right after him? Right? You seem to have the most, ex both times. That he, Izzy had him, like, back when they kickboxed. This, I think it was the first fight. He had him, or it was, no, it was when he knocked him out. Yeah. The second one. Part two, Izzy had him rocked, and the shit got pushed away from the rest, and I think the round ended, yeah. right? Same thing. But those were both early, and then both times late, he goes down. Why not get the thing start? Kind of back to what we were saying about Cheeto. Why don't we get the thing kickstarted a little bit faster? Why not in the middle of the first, we go, we get in his grill. We put that pressure on. Because let's be realistic. Izzy's nasty. He's super accurate. He clearly has enough power to, to rock him, right? Why not start that earlier? Why not apply the pressure? I think he's the more, I think he's way more, I think he's quicker and I think he's more accurate. I do not think he has more, more power. No, because that's obviously not correct. Yeah, what I'm saying, I'm not. I'm just being devil's advocate. I like Pereira, and if you, for all of you who've been watching me, you know I like Pereira. I like Izzy too. I'm just yeah. saying when it comes to together, when Hulk Hogan Ultimate Warrior Clash, I got to pick one. Sucks, right? Pereira has his number, man. This is a kryptonite factor. We've talked about this. Some guys just have your number. Cormier will never be able to beat John Jones, right? <laughs> like sir, certain. Yeah. Garbrandt will never beat Dillashaw, right? These things matter. Jan will never win against Sterling. It's just, it doesn't matter how he lost for it. It's just, it's just a thorn in your side. I see this, I see the same type of shit here, man. I just think it might get done a little faster this time. Because I'm thinking Alex may get a, go a little bit faster. I think he may start this fight quicker than he did last time. Just, just look at it. We were all there. We were there. 
We're all in the fourth, fifth round. What are we saying? Kind of like if you were at the Leon. Oh, this is over, man. He's just dominating. I was the only one not saying I can admit that. That I said the guys sitting next to us are like, oh, this is over with. As he did it, I was like, bro, like you cannot count this guy out. He's just got that power, that superhuman power that at any moment of the fight, just one fucking left hook. One left hook and it's over with. And he takes the roof off. He takes the roof off because that fight, honestly, outside of that first or that last 10 seconds of the first round was, you know, just lackluster dancing around. Again, Izzy's style doesn't make for good television, in my opinion. I've said this to you. This is why I don't call him a big draw. He was their biggest draw last year, but then pay-per-view numbers, three of them combined, didn't do what one Connors does. So you're not that big of a draw, and it's because you don't knock people out necessarily all the time. He's lucky to have a dance partner like Pereira. You are lucky to have a dance partner like this because that's why we're tuning in. Okay? you. I barely watched him versus Cannoneer, and that was International Fight Week last year, guys. Him and Cannoneer. That was one of the most boring fights I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Right? Granted, yeah, we all won because we had Izzy by decision, right? I mean, who the fuck didn't? Easiest bet on the goddamn planet. Nobody wants to see that, man. We want to see some fireworks, and I think Izzy needs to bring it. I think he needs this. What if he loses, guys? What if he loses? What happens to this guy if he loses? You tell me. Is he going to want to go back down the ladder and start fighting Cannoneer again? Yeah. He's going to fight Strickland next week? You think he's going to get up for that fight with the contract they gave him? No goddamn way. He's got to fucking finish this guy. I think he's got to finish him like you said early. The thing about Pereira is that... In that fifth round, he knew he didn't have any other rounds. Like, the desperation factor in his body knew, all right, I need to either kill this guy or I lose. Yeah. And Need that mindset from this first. Uh, yeah. If, if Izzy doesn't bring it from the top, from the get-go, it's going to be a quick night. Also, what I want to mention, too, is if you watch the first fight, those leg kicks – that Pereira was throwing the Izzy. They mattered. They they did a lot Calf to his, matter. his his movement. CKM. Israel's movement was definitely impaired in that fight just because of the, the fucking leg kicks. And that was the first round that he was hitting them with those. And when you're in a building, you can hear them shit slap. Yep. Like they slap. They're like, it's like a, that. And when you hear a body kick, when you're in the building, bro, it is a whole nother level of like, oh, 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 that hurt. Like you go, oh, that hurt. Like you almost feel it. Like when you watch something, you go, ooh, like. Those are going to be crucial yeah. to, to him walking him down maybe by the third and fourth again. I just, oh, man, you can't, if you can't see it, he's never beaten him in three tries, and now he came to his world and can't beat him. He couldn't beat him again. How can you see anything else happening? I can't unsee it. You know? I did it last time. We'll do it again. Everybody clear out. Clear out of the way. Clear out the way. Last time you failed us. This time, you'll do the same goddamn thing. Give me Poetan, Alex Pereira, at minus 125. It's, just, it's plus 125. I got it. Hammer him. It's plus 125. But, like I gave it to you last time, and I don't see any other way that he can win here, there is, there's, he's not going to win a decision. If this goes decision, we've said it, it's going to go one, it's going to go Izzy's way. Yeah. Ain't going to be no decision again. There will be no need for a Sal Diamato and an Adelaide Bird. It's going to be Alex Pereira by knockout, TKO, or DQ. Hammer him. Yeah. Give me a second, guys. I don't know where he's going. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's picking up my trash. We're this bringing him back. No. We're bringing him back. No. You want to throw Leave my guy. You want to throw my guy, Israel Adesanya. Listen, he had this guy beat. He had this guy beat multiple times, but he just can't get over that hump. This is a fight that he needs to get over that hump. I say he stops those calf kicks early, and I say he stops Alex Pereira early. <laughs> Give me Izzy Adesanya by knockout TKO DQ. Motherfucker, let's go. Get it done. Hammer him. Stop sleeping on my guy, man. Everybody want to go against Izzy. Ooh, Poetan knocked him out last time. He knocked him out two times. Israel gets it this time, man. Fuck off. Holy shit. Saved oh, all my energy goodness. for that last minute, man. So, I think I found go. myself an intro to the video. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Gonna have to block out the names. <laughs> 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 Woo! Well, there it is, man. Uh, what a card. Honestly. Like, seriously. Like, that's a, it's show. just an overall good card. Gonna be a fun goddamn night. 
Whew, all right, boys, it's parlay time. Show parlay hit two shows ago. Last show, I mean, Christ, half the fights got canceled, so I don't even, or we didn't even do a show parlay because Matt wasn't here. But it's pay-per-view week, so we give out all types of parlays. We got the show parlay where one of us each pick one of our favorite, like, Solid lock, the one that we really think is going to win. We put into a three-team parlay for you. And uh, like I said, a couple weeks ago, it hit at plus 700. So we'll start off tonight with Maddie Mage. What do we got for your pick yeah, my on the pick, parlay? I, uh, I really like Jackie. Jackie Amarim. Yeah. Hammer him. Not mad at you at all. T, who are you going with on the t show parlay? I'm going to go with Adrian Yanez. Oh, also a good play. Minus 175. Hammer him. And I am going to, as I always do, I, I'm the one who takes the dog, so I usually bump this parlay up for us to about 8-1, to one, maybe 9-1 to one if we get lucky. So I'm going to go with Chris Barnett at plus 190. <laughs> Hammer him. So that's Jackie Amarim, Chris Barnett, and... Adrian Yanez. And Adrian Yanez. That is the three for the show parlay. All right, up next, we're going to have... Which pays out at plus 530. That's all it is, plus 530? Not bad. Still, it's helpful because of me. That's how it gets to 5-1 to one is my 2-1 to one play. Uh, we got the major money line parlay coming from Maddie Mage. He also gives you a three-teamer. T's going to give you his cheap-ass parlay to let you know cocaine isn't cheap. And then I give you the bombs away parlay where I give you three picks with all plus money in them. Maddie Mage, you are up first. Yeah, so for my first pick for my major money line parlay, I'm taking Shai Lynn Nerdam Becky. And Kalabib. That for my second pick, I'm taking Chris Curtis. And Kalabib. And for my final pick, I am taking Raul Rosas Jr. And Kalabib. That He's definitely a color beef. Um, <laughs> all right, you heard it there, folks. That's the Maddie Major money line parlay of the week. Write it down. Paying out okay. plus three hundred. Paying plus 300. Get ready to get uh, my, uh, mine up because T's got his up. T, you're up on the che T's cheap-ass parlay of the week. All right, cheap-ass parlay for this card. We got Lupita Godinez, minus 275. Cocaine isn't cheap. We got Raul Rosas, Jr., minus 230. Cocaine isn't cheap. To top it off, we got Kevin Holland, minus 280. Cocaine is not so cheap. cheap this week. Never that's, ask Kevin Holland to top it off. That's plus one sixty five. Plus, oh, listen, hold, we don't. Hold I don't on, think we hold have. Hold on, hold on. Almost two to one. People were digging so, your one like last week. Listen, I don't good. think there's. It didn't hit though. I thought one of them hit. No, I mean Couple all three of them. Yeah, I'm talking. No, I was just saying last week. Yeah, the one that we did ourselves. Yeah, no good. No, I, I don't think there's one person over minus three hundred for this card. I think the highest is maybe. It's, it's, no, it's it's Gilbert. Minus oh, 430 Gilbert, yeah. is the highest one. Yep. All right, so bombs away parlay for uh, Sean's bombs away parlay. That's me. I don't want to sound like a conceited bastard. It's going to be hard, guys, because you should know I only picked two dogs in this card, so I'm going to take one prop and turn that into a plus money line for the bombs away parlay. So first up, obviously, give me Chris Barnett. Uh, give me, come on, Poetan, Alex Pereira, plus 125. And... To top it off, like I said, I'm gonna give a prop. Give me the guy who runs with the cheaters. Give me Shylon Nerden Beck by TKO knockout or DQ. Oh. We're paying around 14 to 1. Oh. oh. Man, for the picks I give out, they should put me. Fucking federal prison. Yep, they should. That's a big one. 14 to 1, 1. 1.6 to 1, and 3 to 1. 3 to 1. And the show is fine. It, that like balances out. Pick one, pick them all, put five on it, put 100 on one if you're feeling confident. The show parlay is probably most likely to hit. Um, but Bombs Away could definitely hit this week. You know, Got us all the plus money on that without picking any dog over plus 190. is pretty, uh, pretty solid. T's cheap-ass parlay, guys. Come on. One, plus 165. On. I've never on, played guys. his cheap-ass parlay. That's a value. This week, value play. That's great value. you find that in the cheap aisle at the fucking grocery store. Personally, store. I think it's value every week, but. Yeah, I know. You know, you motherfuckers. He he doesn't mind pennies on the dollar. Come on. Uh, so anyway, guys, thanks for uh, watching and thanks for listening, commenting, liking, subscribing. Uh, we appreciate you a ton. We will not be doing a live stream. So Neil, we will not be doing a live stream. Do not ask. Uh, with your ten like, different accounts. With your ten accounts that you have, we uh, we will. We are going on some Easter vacations. Everybody is. Uh, T's gonna be down in a fucking flow rider. So if you see him out in the streets. Check him and see if he's got the heat. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, so, again, thank you. We appreciate you uh, helping us grow. Uh, to all our new subscribers out there, we appreciate you. And uh, you know how we do. Cash them tickets. Because I'm coming on your ass. What's his name? So I wave it all the day. I got talking on my name. They don't even know me yet. Jealousy and evil trait.
All you bitches showing they look up. 